Russia dams drones with terrifying efficiency, Ukraine has found a solution. Russian occupiers are jamming Ukrainian drones on the front lines and the enemy's work has been terrifyingly effective. Because of this, Ukrainian developers had to show ingenuity. This is how the Eagle Eyes software package for drones was born. Developed by Ukrainian special forces, it allows drones to navigate using only machine vision. Using artificial intelligence algorithms, the program compares a real-time video image of the terrain with an onboard map stitched from photographs and videos collected earlier by reconnaissance aircraft. This allows the drones to continue to perform their tasks even after they were drowned out, writes The Economist. Eagle Eyes is also trained to recognize specific ground targets including tanks, transporters, missile launchers and attack helicopters. The drone can then release bombs or dive without operator command. According to the captain, who wishes to remain anonymous, Eagle Eyes is programmed to prioritize jamming stations. Priority number two is Russian S-400 anti-aircraft missile batteries. In the spring of 2023, Eagle Eyes were tested in combat by only three special forces groups, each of which had two or three drones. Today, Eagle Eyes are cheap enough for kamikaze drones and are widely used, says Valery Borovic, commander of the White Eagle unit fighting in southern Ukraine. The system, with a range of about 60 kilometers, also guides unmanned aerial vehicles that strike energy infrastructure in Russia, he said. A hybrid of an air defense system and an aircraft missile has been created in Ukraine. Experts installed R-73 short-range aircraft missiles on the OSA AKM anti-aircraft missile system instead of the standard 9M33M3 missiles. The work was carried out to compensate for the lack of standard anti-aircraft missiles for the OSA air defense system. In addition, Ukraine has created naval air defense drones. A few days ago, the head of the security service of Ukraine, Vasily Maliuk, officially confirmed that the Ukrainian Sea Baby drones were equipped with GRAD multiple launch rocket systems. Poland allowed the armed forces of Ukraine to use weapons supplied by the Republic to strike targets on the territory of the Russian Federation. This statement was made by the Deputy Ministry of Defense of the State, Cesary Tomczyk, on the radio station Radio Z. There are no such restrictions on the Polish weapons that we supply to Ukraine, he said, speaking about the possibility of Ukrainian armed forces striking Russia with Polish weapons. Tomczyk added that Warsaw was preparing the 45th military aid package for Ukraine. According to his assessment, its total value over the past years amounted to $3.75 to $5 billion. Earlier, French President Emmanuel Macron announced the need to allow attacks on military targets on Russian territory. In turn, John Kirby, coordinator for strategic communications at the White House National Security Council, said that the United States of America does not support the desire of the Ukrainian authorities to use weapons supplied by the West to attack Russia. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also supported Ukraine's position, emphasizing that the country has a full right to defend itself and can attack targets outside its borders. EU diplomacy chief Josep Borrell echoed this opinion, calling on EU member states not to put the fear of escalation above Ukraine's right to defense. At the same time, Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo emphasized a different position at a joint conference with Volodymyr Zelensky. He said that military equipment supplied to Ukraine should be used only on its territory. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has called on world leaders, in particular, US leader Joe Biden to attend the peace summit to be held in Switzerland in mid-June. The Ukrainian leader said United States' possible absence in the summit would be applauded by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Zelensky made the remarks on an official visit to Belgium on Tuesday where he secured a military aid deal amid intensified Russian attacks. The peace summit needs President Biden and so do the other leaders who look at the reaction of the United States. Putin will only applaud his absence, personally applauded, and standing, at that, Zelensky said. Stressing that, every voice is important, Zelensky said he was also expecting a reply from China and Brazil. Scheduled for 15-16 June near Lucerne, 
the summit is organized upon Zelensky's request to ensure a just and lasting peace. Over 160 delegations have been invited, including members of the G7, G20, the EU, the Council of Europe and the UN. However, Russia is not among the invited states. Zelensky urged world leaders to attend the summit in a video address in English last week. Please, show your leadership in advancing the peace, the real peace and not just a pause between the strikes, said Zelensky in his address. The peace summit has been planned for months now. The complete agenda of the summit has not yet been publicized yet. However President Zelensky has said the exchange of political prisoners, the safety of nuclear plants, and the return of abducted children should on the agenda of the summit.